So I know you guys have like uh, three questions running through your head every time you watch a video on this channel. One, uh, how much money did you lose on Bitcoin? The second being, how'd you trap a woman into marrying you while looking like Ed Kemper? And finally, how did I manage to get fat again? Well, if you guys remember, I lost a bunch of weight in preparation for that fabled hiking trip. Uh, I think I was at my lowest uh, right when I went to PAX West at about 214. Look at me, I look like a snack. Fast forward through COVID season, and I'm now at 242 this morning. And you're saying, Sam, how the hell did you do that? It's impressive. It ain't easy but I can walk you through it. I know what you're thinking. You're saying, Sam, how is this possible? Was it depression? Huh? Were you depressed from doing your YouTube job? Was the stresses of YouTube getting to you? Well, you know, I know OSHA has tied being a YouTuber with being an air traffic controlman for the world's most stressful job. But believe it or not, I'm doing fine. Yeah, despite the occupational stresses, I managed to wake up every morning with a shit-eating grin on my face. The problem began when I uh, figured out how to make Crunchwrap Supreme. You guys remember Crunchwrap Supremes, right? It's the only edible thing off the Taco Bell menu. It's like a quesadilla, but it's hexagonal and pressed into a beautiful geometric delight. I figured out how to make them. Actually, I didn't figure out how to make them. My wife figured out how to make them for me, and then she was nice enough to write it down on a little piece of paper describing step by step what to do. But for the sake of this video, uh, I figured out how to make them all on my own. I'm gonna let you guys in on a little secret. Uh, Mexican food basically has six ingredients. It's just arranged in different order. So you can just grab willy-nilly crap in here and it'll basically all work. Now then, of course, I know you're gonna come at me with a counter rebuttal and go like, well, why does it matter if it's Crunchwrap Supreme? If it all tastes the same, just make a taco. It doesn't, that's, no. No, no, I'm saying it's all made with the same ingredients. I'm not saying it all tastes the same. I'm saying it's the same old shit this is the same, like, the hexagon matters. This is the same reason why you had your mom cut your fucking sandwiches into triangles. It tastes better. Unless your mom didn't love you, then she just put it in a fucking Ziploc bag and <laughs> grabbed the zip and, like, crunched it in her hand. So, yeah, I got some uh, uh, shredded chicken here. Uh, cheese, oh, that's Italian cheese. That ain't gonna work. Cheese, salsa, chicken, uh, uh, tom tomatoes, sour cream. Uh, queso, in case you got some of that, that's always good. Am I missing something here? Do we not have lettuce? Uh, lettuce. All right, let's bring this shit over to the chopping block. You also have to get Cholula sauce. I don't know, this, stu this stuff fucks hard. I'm a little bit like Hillary Clinton. I keep a bottle of this in my purse in case I need to uh, cozy up to some hombres at the border. So what's something that you always carry with you? Hot Just sauce. Bruh. By the way, this is, uh, as a white guy, this is about as spicy as I get. Anything past this and I'm on the floor crying. So there's two reasons why I'm making this video. The first of which is because um, I'm in the middle of making another video and I'm not finished yet. And the, uh, and the second is because I was watching the Food Network, right? And these TV shows are now made at home since COVID hit and they're recorded on iPhones. On iPhones, man. These shows make a, these are network TV shows. They make a gorillion dollars and they're recorded on fucking iPhones. And since my man Alton Brown's Good Eats show has been uh, off the air for a couple of years now, I'm like, dude, there, there ain't a single funny person left. So I was like, fuck it, I'll make a, a show uh, with as high a production value as Food Network has, which is like nothing, right? It's basically a YouTube video. And, uh, and it's, it's gonna be the only food show that isn't made by some redhead uppity bitch living on a ranch that uh, downs 120 milligrams of fucking Xanax every morning. Uh, maybe I shouldn't be so negative if I want to get this on TV. It was supposed to be about the crunch wraps. That got kind of dark. <laughs> Wife's gonna be freaking pissed at me though, because I'm chopping up an entire onion uh, for the sole purpose of just making one crunch wrap supreme. So, by the way, I tried doing that whole like, uh, not, I heard from a million people, they're like, hey, uh, the uh, 
deodorant with aluminum in it uh, causes Alzheimer's, right? And I don't have very good memory already. You know, my memory is fading fast. And so I was like, oh shit, I should probably stop using that stuff. And so I went to O Natural deodorant, right? And uh, within two days, my wife's pregnant right now, right? So she's got like Spider-Man senses. Within two days, I was reeking like this smell, onions. Like the smell you get on your fingers. And I'm talking, when I went to bed that night, she was like in bed just going like, like gagging because I smelled so much like onions. And it uh, turns out that's my natural body odor. It's just the uh, horrible, gross smell of onions. <laughs> that's my natural musk, is the beautiful smell of onions. And, uh, and so then I started doing some serious research about whether or not that rumor was true about the whole like, uh, you know, deodorant causes Alzheimer's and dementia. And it turns out that it's not really true. It only works if your body has bad uh, kidney function and it can't filter out toxins in your blood. So as long as you have kidneys that work, use all the aluminum deodorant you want. Now you might be noticing that I'm not washing my vegetables. And that's because I'll do it, Jesus Christ. I know there's gonna be people that are like, oh my God, he's not washing his vegetables. I'll give him a rinse off. These things were just sitting in the dirt. Like, come on. They're already gross. I doubt a rinse off is doing a whole lot. If you're starting YouTube, there's two things you don't wanna get into. One of which is woodworking, because everybody's an expert. If you do anything, there's gonna be some, somebody's dad that comes out of nowhere and he's like, oh, actually, I feel like a mortar and a tenon joint would have worked better with that. And two is cooking, because that's the female equivalent of woodworking. They're gonna come out and be like, oh, actually, I feel like, uh, you know, <laughs> Women all sound like Kermit the Frog in my book. Uh, I feel like putting that in a uh, souffle would have been preferable to a Crunchwrap Supreme. <laughs> I'm using, actually, you know what, that's the perfect amount of lettuce, I feel like. You don't want too much lettuce, because this isn't, we're not shooting for healthy here, we're shooting for gaining weight. Okay? Because this is sympathy weight. I'm gaining this so that my wife doesn't feel uh, super fat while pregnant. I, I can assure you, every single pound I gain, I hate gaining it, but I'm just gaining it because of my love for her. It's a selfless act, but it's one that I'm willing to do as a loving husband. It's important that you, while cooking, you also treat yourself to a delicious Diet Coke. Oh, well, looks like Abby might have killed a bug or something on here. This is the assembly. This is where it all comes together. Now, this is a really uh, a free-form art. You can really just let your soul, this is like smooth jazz. You let your soul be free. As long as you start off with a large flour tortilla, much like this one. And as long as in the middle, you have a uh, original Chara's, uh, one of these flat corn, things and then as long as you top it off with a small flour tortilla you should all be good everything else in between is uh it's just smooth jazz baby go as you please all right actually hold on i'm gonna go above and beyond because really the diameter of this thing is determined by the crunch in the middle this makes the crunch of the crunch wrap and so my flour tortilla kind of eclipses the diameter of this. So I'm actually gonna cut this bad boy so it fits. Now that's what I call cooking. Okay, so you have your base. You have your meat, which is still cold from the other night. I should probably microwave this. Well, we're heating that up in the microwave. Um, it's important to realize that this is going down and it's kind of thick. So your stuff in the middle might not have time to fully melt if your pan's too hot. So you gotta have your pan kind of like on it. My pan's not on, I should probably turn that on, hold on. You're gonna want your pan on like a medium, medium heat. Enough where it sits on there, 
Medium, maybe medium high. No, nah, not medium high. That's too high. Just medium. I'm not going to give you a range. I'm going to tell you medium. And you let that bad boy heat up all the way. And it should be able to sear your tortilla, uh, but not too quickly. Because you still want to melt all the interior ingredients. Usually I'd eat this with like ground beef or something like that. But uh, Abby's figured out how to make, uh, it's some sort of like, I don't know, it's like taco chicken, but she puts it in like the pressure cooker and it just like falls apart when it's done. Dude, it is fucking, mwah! it is so good. All right, we're gonna start with some sour cream. No, 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 I, you know, it seems like I haven't done this before. I can assure you I have, maybe, maybe once. We're gonna start off with some cheese. And then I realize after I put the cheese on there that I probably should have put the sour cream on first because that's easier. Mm -hmm. But then we're gonna we're gonna put some onion after that. Yeah, maybe a little bit of onion on there. Maybe a little bit of lettuce. Who knows? Maybe a little bit more lettuce. Who knows? Spread that around. Then comes the crunch part of the crunch wrap. The most important part. We put that down. Uh, this way. <laughs> I don't think it matters which way. I'm gonna be honest with you. Then we apply sour to cream. Okay, sour cream, and then I'm gonna do the whole meat. Uh, now this ain't Taco Bell, baby. I, no filler, it's just straight up chicken breasticles. And then uh, I'm missing something. Oh, I haven't done tomatoes yet. God damn, Daniel, that's looking good. Now this is what makes it a crunch wrap. You fold. Start with what I gotta make sure this camera's on because if I have to do this twice, I'm gonna straight up sock a bitch. First, you fold one side over. Are you getting this? Then, you fold another side over. Are you getting this? Then, you fold a third. This is the most daring side, so to speak. And you keep repeating this process until this is not gonna go well because I'm not covering the center. I don't think my, my tortillas are not large enough. God damn it, Abby, you've, you've thwarted this very plan. Okay, you're not supposed to actually have like a little butthole in the middle. <laughs> you're not supposed to have that sensual little butthole right in the middle. I think you're supposed to get larger, get larger than uh, extra large flour tortillas. They need to be larger than extra large. If there's like an XXL, Get that. I should probably make a second one of these so I can bisect it. Here's these tortillas. Are these larger than extra large? No, these are the same diameter. How did she do this? She made them so perfect last night. I want to at least get one pretty one for the boys. Oh, I fucked it up. God damn it. Okay, that's the problem. I was about ready to make another one. I forgot the topper. Once you finish with the tomato and chicken, you put the topper on there and then you start the fold. God, I'm stupid. See, this is why I should have, I threw away Abby's little note thing that told me how to make it. Cause I thought I'm a big boy, I can do it without her. Turns out I'm not a big boy and I can't do it without her. There you go. That's the, that's the final look. You're supposed to have the topper, the one that we cut. I was this close to fucking up this episode. I was right there. And then it was sitting right there, I saw it. No, first, what it was, is first I saw the crescent and I was like, what the heck, is, where'd that come from? And I forgot I had cut and I saw the thing and I was like, holy Jesus. <sighs> All right, just to prove to you guys that this is free form as fuck, I'm gonna do another one. And this time I'm gonna be like, uh, I'm gonna change up the, the sequence of events, All right? Oh God, I'm not cutting this one nearly as nice as the other one, it doesn't matter. And this time we're gonna start with sour cream and then we're gonna do the chicken. Oh my God, Sam's going off the beaten path. He's a wild man, he's off the reservation. How is he doing it? He's starting meat? Are you kidding me? Gee, someone call Gordon Ramsay. Just to soak up the rest of that sour cream uh, so it doesn't get too soggy on this side, I'm gonna put some lettuce in there. Then comes the crunch part of the crunch wrap. This is getting spicy, folks. Pay attention. Then, the remainder of our tomatoes. A Little bit of onion. And then we gotta bop some cheese on this bitch. This one's getting a little bit sloppier. I'm, I'm working more like a line chef at Taco Bell at this point. 
slap the top layer on there, and then here comes the whole part of what makes it supreme. This is what makes it the next level. This is what takes it uh, from a taco that I wouldn't bat an eye at to this absolute slam piece of mouth desire. The fold, the hexagon shape. Do the one fold and then the two. Turn three, wipe the sweat off your mustache. Go for the fourth, the fifth. This is the final one. This is the one that separates the boys from the men because I haven't figured out how to make this thing beautiful yet on that, uh, that sixth fold. I think you just do it down like that. It doesn't look good. It never looks good, but it tastes good. That's all that matters. And there you have it, two Crunchwrap Supremes. Now we just gotta cook these sons of bitches. When cooking your Crunchwrap Supreme, it is imperative that you put your butter down, right? And then you put it folds down, folds down so that with the heat, they get stiff and it'll remain closed. You gotta let it sear on that side or else you're gonna end up with this thing that just flops open and it's lost its magic. It's lost its, you might as well just be eating a taco. Go fuck yourself. You know what, give it a, give it a little massage while it's in there. Give it a little, spank it. Little bad bitch, you cook in that pan. Treat your food with some emotion, people. You ever see on the Food Network, those ladies, they're just devoid of emotion. They're saying it's all, only good vibes because they know that the people that watch the Food Network are depressed single ladies that are in their 60s. And the only guys that watch it are gay dudes that wanna fuck Guy Fieri. That's it, those are the only people. So this cooking show I'm making right here is for normal humans that wanna eat Crunchwrap Supremes. This is a, this is a divorced man's uh, cooking show. That's the, that's the demographic I'm going for. Now that it's cooked on this side, you give it a nice little turnover and it should stay closed. You see that? It's important that it, it kind of stiffens up and stays closed and you let it cook on the other side. You know, if you, if you really need instructions at this point, then fucking give up. Like there's nothing easier than cooking a quesadilla. My cooking skills are limited. I can make a, a mean pot of boiling water. I can make cereal, toast, and now crunch wrap Supremes. Those are like, I can make a pot of coffee. I forgot about that. That's really the extent of my uh, culinary expertise. So if you can't make this, then there's some serious problems with you. This is about as elementary as it gets here. Oh my God, what a butte. This one's, this one's finished. Hold on, I'm gonna put the other one in and then we can continue talking. Boom. Oh yeah, this one's coming together nicely. We'll flip this bad boy over. That one's got a little bit less of a sear going on. I actually think I usually have it on a little bit higher temperature. Let me crank that temp up. Ah, oh, shit. I forgot to use the queso. I pulled it out and everything. I got, you know, I'm just gonna microwave it and then use it as like a dip or something and say it was an intentional thing. Uh, yeah, so now you put the queso in the microwave and, uh, and use it as a dip later um, as planned. All right, right here we have our completed Crunchwrap Supremes. Looking pretty good if I do say so myself. We got that beautiful hexagonal look. We got uh, two, that one's really hot. And now for the bisect. Now, usually I just eat this thing like a mad cunt over the uh, chopping block here. But for the sake of this, I'll put it on a plate. I'm even gonna bisect one for you. Oh my God, look at that. Beautiful, exquisite. Oh. Damn, son, look at that. Oh, that smells good too. Oh, I'm not supposed to taste test it yet, but I can't help myself. Mmm, damn. Just like Sam used to make. This is basically the kind of stuff I've been eating uh, for the past whatever months since, since quarantine hit. And I guess not only am I making this video to explain to you what I've been eating to gain weight, but more importantly, I think as a humanitarian thing, like as a way to pass on knowledge, uh, I'm assuming after this election, the world is going to descend into chaos. And the way that they were burning down those Wendy's and the Target super centers, Taco Bell might be on the list. They might get taken out, wiped from history. 
And I feel like me making this has helped pass on the knowledge of how to make one of their staples of their menu. And so even though America might fall in November, it warms my heart knowing that the Crunchwrap Supreme may live on. This has been General Sam, and I'll see you guys for the next one.